corrections in crypto are expected and I've told everybody from day one that you need to be able to expect at least a 50% correction in the middle of a bull market. And we've had pretty close to that. Ethereum has been pretty close. Many of the alts have been uh, larger corrections than that. I don't have any issue per se with the volatility. The key of crypto markets is buy and hold and don't use leverage. If you're doing anything else, you're exposing yourself to extremely extreme volatility that's hard to deal with. These kind of moves require time for the market to digest. There's overhang, there's a kind of general uncertainty. But from my conversations I've had this week, it sounds like there's a lot of institutional money about to come back in again. As I've talked about that feature, there was less institutional money for a while, but I've heard that there's a lot coming. I think it's wrong to try and analyze Bitcoin with a macro perspective outside of the longer run. So the longer run is central bank balance sheets uh, are expanding and that's an ongoing process that will, you know, over the next decade, we expect that to continue. There is very limited correlation between Bitcoin and any other macro thematic. There's very few factors that you can isolate. The factors in Bitcoin right now is this mining shutdown and restrictions right. in China, and that is causing selling. What's fascinating is crypto volumes have imploded. So that's telling you that the liquidations are over. I think we're in the final stages of, of this repositioning from China, and the markets will stabilize in due course. We're already seeing whales accumulating at a very rapid rate now, and it feels that the process of Chinese handover of crypto to the world is close to an end. Corrections in crypto are expected, and I've told everybody from day one that you need to be able to expect at least a 50% correction in the middle of a bull market. And we've had pretty close to that. Ethereum has been pretty close. Many of the alts have been uh, larger corrections than that. So it's expected, it's normal. Within the logarithmic trend, you get these things, but they don't do a lot of damage to the chart overall because the logarithmic trend holds true. Um, so I don't have any issue per se with the volatility. The key of crypto markets is buy and hold and don't use leverage. If you're doing anything else, you're exposing yourself to extremely, extreme volatility that's hard to deal with. If you buy and hold it, you just sit and, sit and wait and you use these moments to accumulate. It's very similar to 2013 in, in Bitcoin. The peak to trough sell-off was about 65%. Um, it feels that this is going to be something very similar. And then before you know it, the narrative changes. I was um, swapping emails with Tom Demark, um, who very graciously sent me the odd email about stuff. And um, he was looking for the market to trade lower over this weekend. And he's been telling me this for a while now. And he was looking for a potential low of about 25,000 in Bitcoin. That would be the low. And I'm getting a number of different corroborating evidence that somewhere between here and there, and probably in the next week, maybe even less is the low. And that's, that's how I think about it too. I think we're very, very close. So I put a piece out for Macro Insiders, for Global Macro Investor, and put a piece on Real Vision's daily briefing just to say, listen, you should be accumulating in these kind of sell-offs. Nothing has structurally changed. Yes, there's a bit of a fight going on with the Chinese miners. And I think the outcome, there's a number of different cross currents going on there, but mainly I think it's to reduce the coal consumption of the Bitcoin miners who are using coal. Those are the least regulated of all. Um, so I think that is part of the narrative. And, and the Chinese are getting themselves set up properly for their, for their central bank digital currency to make sure that um, that the on-ramps and off-ramps are all right and that kind of stuff and regulations in place. 10-year bonds break 140, which is the uptrend. Then they could go significantly lower. That's again, almost always happens after a recession. Bond yields actually go lower again. So I'm looking for that. I'm under looking at the fiscal cliff that's coming. Uh, many of the fiscal policies start rolling off. Um, I'm looking at the effects of the post reopening. So there's pent up demand and that slows down how much has been brought forward. And I know that uh, David Rosenberg spoke about that with Ed uh, this week as well on Real Vision. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at all of those things. Um, 
And I just get the feeling that this transition will see bond yields fall. That probably would coincide with the dollar. The dollar looks like it wants to break upwards from an inverse head and shoulders. I talked about this last week on the daily briefing. Um, or you can use the euro chart, which is a fantastic chart, which is a huge head and shoulders top. Um, and if that breaks kind of the 118 level, OK, we could see a significant move from here. So, yes, there's been selling from these miners as people have been shut down or people don't know where they are, they haven't got clarification from the Chinese government. There's been the narratives and all the kind of Elon Musk sagas and then other sagas going on. This market price action, to me, feels like it's the fear of the weekend is now upon us because we had two awful weekends the last two weekends. And everyone's like, oh, my God, what are they going to do to us? What's China going to announce overnight? Are they going to burn Bitcoiners at the stake? So that's what's going on, I think. I was um, swapping emails with Tom Demark, um, who very graciously sent me the odd email about stuff. And um, he was looking for the market to trade lower over this weekend. And he's been telling me this for a while now. And he was looking for a potential low of about 25,000 in Bitcoin. That would be the low. And I'm getting a number of different corroborating evidence that somewhere between here and there, and probably in the next week, maybe even less is the low. And that's that's how I think about it too. I think we're very, very close. Uh, I think that these kind of moves require time for the market to digest. There's overhang, there's a kind of general uncertainty. But from my conversations I've had this week, it sounds like there's a lot of institutional money about to come back in again. As I've talked about that feature, there was less institutional money for a while, but I've heard that there's a lot coming. There is this very obvious head and shoulders pattern, which everybody's freaking out about, but it broke it last week and then went straight back above it, which is interesting because normally a pattern like that breaks and it free falls. Let's see what happens over this weekend. But I think people should be on alert for a reversal soon in all of this. That's how I'm looking at it. I think we're done in time and price, pretty close. It feels that the market is going to be overestimating growth and inflation for the next six months, potentially. And that's pretty common after a recession. You get this growth spurt as everything comes back online, and then it tends to weaken off. So I see a reasonable amount of economic evidence for that, and I'm going to be digging into that over the weekend to look at that. But I think that over the next six months, Economic growth is weaker, inflation is weaker. So I think that soon we will have a trend change back up again. Um, if I look at the Bitcoin chart, could it make a new low and then bounce? Possibly. Um, but it's starting to get to the weekly nine count on DMARC, which is one of the, my favorite technical studies that uh, from Tom DeMarc. And I, I was even chatting to Tom this week and he's like, yeah, it could have another new low. But then we start setting up this weekly if we had a new low, we set up for a daily low and a weekly low, which is an extraordinarily song, strong signal in that kind of charting technique. Corrections in crypto are expected, and I've told everybody from day one that you need to be able to expect at least a 50% correction in the middle of a bull market. Nothing has structurally changed. Yes, there is a bit of a fight going on with the Chinese miners, and I think the outcome, there's a number of different cross currents going on there, but mainly I think it's to reduce the coal consumption of Bitcoin miners who are using coal. Uh, I think that these kind of moves require time for the market to digest. There's overhang, there's a kind of general uncertainty. It feels that the market is going to be overestimating growth and inflation for the next six months, potentially.